Hey everyone, how are you today? Woo. Okay, so we're here to talk about something new. I don't know if you ever heard about it. We're going to hear about, talk about AI. And in order to make it last more of the same thing, we invited our, our friends, we invited Floppy and friends, and we're going to do this adventure and do this talk with them. So let let's get started. Uh, Nice to meet you all. I'm Niv Jungelson. Uh, I'm an AWS community hero and an AWS user group leader. Uh, I was, up until three and a half months ago, I was the head of DevOps at Milio. And nowadays, I'm a cloud consultant. And I have the nerdiest tattoo. I have a pseudo tattoo on my finger. And hello, everyone. Yeah, clap your hands. That's perfect. <laughs> and hello, everyone. I'm Guy. I'm a solution architect at Commodore. I'm leading the platformers community for platform engineering and also CNCF ambassador. I'm really excited to be with you and, and share with everyone and also Neve our thoughts about AI and observability. So what are we are going to do today? So we are going to do a quick intro about AI, make sure that everyone in the room knows what is AI and how we can we use it? I guess that you have some experience with AI still today. And we're going to talk how it matches observability and how AI actually going to change the way we observe and running observability um, with real life examples, by the way. Cool, so let's start with a quick introduction about AI. So I guess that some of you, or maybe all of you, have a, a quick try with ChatGPT or one of the other chats. And what that essentially is, is that we are using large language models, uh, or LLMs. And what it does, the essentially models uh, or programs that they get text input, you prompt whatever you want, you ask them to do anything, hopefully they can do that. And based on the data they pre-train on, they get you back with a text output, as simple as that. But they do uh, some complex thing in between. So they try basically to predict what is the best result for you. So if you ask something, they're trying to, based on all the data, they try to evaluate your question based on the data they already had in place and pre-train on, and then they send you what should be a good result for that. Uh, the main use case for that is usually summarization. You saw that if you search something, and then basically you got the summarization of that from any source in the internet, or you try to predict something, or you try to uh, basically like generate something. So you ask them to write a poem or write uh, even a book. Uh, all of that, those large language models can do, and they're still available. So OpenAI ones is the most, I think, common one today. Uh, but basically, there are a lot of them available. Mistral is one of the most common one for uh, on-prem uh, environments. And you can use whatever you want. But there is one single problem about them is that we definitely want to connect our observability stack into the large language models. Uh, we want to make sure that we get the data, we fetch the data, and use the power of AI for that. But the main problem is that, unfortunately, LLMs are too general for observability. So they are trained not to use observability for anything. They are trained only to do the simple tasks they are train. Usually, it's what we said, summarization and generalization, and predict what you'd be happy to get as a result. So, Niv, what do you think we can do to solve that? Yeah, so basically, do have a possible solution. We can do fine tuning. So, what, what we're going to do is we're going to take a general model uh, that can solve a problem, for example, an LLM model, and then we, um, we take a subset of this model and we train it with our data, with our, our data, <laughs> the, the data of our organization. And then the answers that we're going to receive will be more custom made for our needs. OK, but then we still have a few problems. The main issue is that LLM cannot query live but by itself. So it's creating an issue that we need every week or a month, every few, every <laughs> Set of time, we need to, to fine tune the, result, the results with the new data that we get, get because it's not synchronizing in real time. So we, we can solve that, and there is a solution. Um, a solution that can help us to go to the prompt, ask a question, 
and get a result which actually queried by live data. And this is called RUG. Uh, RUG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. And what it does is basically before we get the text output, uh, we can connect it to the fine tuning predefined data that we added. It means to do a more observability task, uh, but also to query that. So for example, if you ask, I know, what is the average memory we had over the last week? Uh, it can go into Prometheus. It can query this data, create a prompt QL for it, and give you the results back. And that's super interesting, because it's used a lot, especially uh, with new application using AI. Because that way, each company can define its own use case and make it very gen general, and to connect the LLM to their own database. Um, so how do you think that the AI world will look if we will, uh, the observability world will look if we'll add a little bit of AI to it? Oh, wow, which part of the observability world? Because there are so many steps. And what now that uh, we went through all the basics and everything, and we're all speaking at the same uh, level, and everybody knows what those buzzwords are, uh, we're going to take it through each step of the observability. And together, we will try to imagine how this world will look like when we add the magic of AI to it. Maybe it will be in a year from today, in five years, or, or in a decade. My guess is that it's going to happen sooner than later, because all of us here are builders, and the timeline, it's really up to us. So the first step is continuous preparation. And I bet all of you have done it, like decided on which logs to collect from which server, which metrics are needed, what is the retention period of everything. And on top of that, we need to build the dashboards and do the alarms and everything. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. And each time we add a new service to production, we need to go back and decide all those things all over again for every service that we do. But maybe when we add the magic of AI, to the continuous preparation step, the model will create the dashboard for us. And actually, it's not something that is so futuristic, because even nowadays, we can create YAMLs <laughs> using, using AI. And it makes things so much easier. It can create complex queries for us. We don't need to have so much knowledge or so much experience to create a good dashboard or to prepare a good, uh, a good visibility, a good observability. And the fun part, you know how the DevOps or the operation person is always uh, a bottleneck? Well, no more. Because with AI, even a junior developer or a product or everyone can use whatever they need. They can create queries and dashboards and create everything by themselves. And that's amazing. Like, How many of you in the last week went to one of the dashboards and do the weekly, daily, or monthly review? See a, f a few of ends, I know. Uh, so one of the one of that is that once every while we go to the dashboard and then try to assess. We're trying to assess first of all if all the data that we take a look at really looks good. Uh, if the data that we review in the dashboard is actually relevant, do we have anything, any concern that we need to solve? All of these questions is something that we ask ourselves once in a while, and that's that, that's kind of nice. But it takes a lot of resources to do that. And, and imagine how many dashboards there are. And, and walking through them can be really painful. So what we can do is that we can have an AI assistant that will go through our dashboards and refine them for us. They will check the results. They will check the data. Um, they will gather insights for you. So you don't need to do it on your own. For example, if something going to explode, you would get it pre-hand. And, and that's amazing. Um, and more than that, like, we do basic calculation on our own, but AI tools really packed with advanced algorithms, uh, advanced ability to do correlation, and that's make them much more uh, advanced in terms of functionalities than what we have today. And more than that, um, there is a little thing about ownership. So we know that we do need to still be the owner of our dashboards. We will still need to do and review them once in a while. But we can reduce significantly how long, how frequent we do that. And we can make AI our own uh, observability inst um, assistant. So that can be amazing. What do you think about alerting? OK, so I think that nowadays with alerting, we have uh, many challenges. 
And one, two of the biggest ones for me at least, I think, is the fact that we need to, con to configure each alert separately, even if you do it by code. Still need to define what's uh, the threshold for each service and what is critical for production and what not. And the other one, I think that it's even bigger, is that we, we probably all have this Slack channel with uh, critical production alerts uh, that alert you at night and everything. And, but probably at some point, uh, you had some false positives that weren't really false positives. They, they were positives. But as the system changes and scales, those thresholds stay the same, but the needs or the criticality changes. And then you just get alert fatigue because you have so many alerts in this channel that used to be just for the most critical ones. And it's like the boy who cried wolf, right? You don't know if you really, really need to wake up in the middle of the night to take care of it or not. So it does create a big challenge. With the magic of AI, <laughs> we can create alerts using LMM for a start. And we can get smarter thresholds. Nowadays, the thresholds are static. Uh, but we, with AI, it can look at across the entire system and make correlations that for, our, for us as human beings, it's harder to make. And it, create a, it can create dynamic uh, threshold that change uh, by, by the, the state of the entire system or the day maybe, if there's a holiday or something, which is really cool. Um, and we can also get, get uh, complexities and dependencies out of the box. We don't need to, to do it by themselves and save time for, by configuring one by one and managing, of course. How about investigation? Do you like investigating <laughs> downtimes? I, I don't like investigating at all, and I don't think anyone likes. Uh, like, you get an alert in the middle of the night, and then you need to start to investigate. You need to find the right dashboard, and then you need to figure out what's the right metrics, maybe to do some correlation on your own. That's bad, and sometimes you don't need to investigate in, with an incident. Sometimes you just have a query that you want to run, and you ask yourself something about your infrastructure or something about your software. And that's great because we can leverage LLMs and use them in order to investigate. How? We have connected them to our database, and now they can create a dashboard for us when we have an incident. You don't need maybe to define it in advance. You can say, OK, this is my incident. Those are the relevant components. Please bring me the most relevant dashboards. And as it runs like prompt QL queries and you get a query today, you would get the full dashboard just for prompt that. And that can be a game changer when we go in into investigation. Something that we see a lot is the way to extract logs. So when we, when we talk about logging, uh, doing like sending the logs to our system, that, that's the easy part. But filter them, that can be really hard, and especially for people that are not like the experts in the team in terms of observability, they don't really know how to filter and vents and get uh, the juice out of the logs. So we, we can use the AI in order to get into the logs, find all the relevant data, and summarize the log for us. And that can be a really game changer in that. One of the main things that we talked about is that there is the current state of the environment. And we want to keep that in mind when we investigate. So one of the questions that we ask ourselves is that, should we solve the problem? Or should we keep investigating in order to find out the root cause in a much more deep level? And then we know that the first action we are going to take is going to fix it. And those, this question is actually comes up in any part of our incident. And what LLM allows us to do is basically to get a snapshot of all of the environment and get all of the information, especially if we're running a server, thing are actually recycling on our servers to get that information. And that can be truly game changer to how we query what we want, whenever we want, and in a simple way we want. Um, and the whole investigation world is going to go upside down uh, with LLMs. Uh, what do you think about predictions? That's my favorite one, actually. Who here does on call? Yes, thank you. I bet most of you, if not, then maybe you are CTOs or something, because everybody I know does on-call uh, duty. Uh, so it means that we're not so good at doing prediction by ourselves. So there's a lot of place for improvement. And with AI, we can basically 
make ourselves like sort of a Megazord <laughs> combination with, with a, that data engineer. And if, if you are data engineers, then you can make yourself a Megazord with an operations engineer. Uh, and then you have like all the skills that needed to make the correlations across the entire system and make the pre predictions more precise and better and sleep better at night, of course. And after the downtime, as if it's not bad enough, you need to write the postmortem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no one likes to write postmortem. You need to gather the information to go through the, the metrics, the observability tool, the incident, maybe Slack or the chat you are using. Gather all these pieces of information takes a very long time. And, and after we gather all of that, we need to analyze. We need to think, OK, which decision that we, we took one year ago made the impact that we see today? What do we need to do in the future in order to improve that? So we need to analyze. We need to be the big thinkers of, of what a, a good postmortem should be. Um, and, and that's interesting because there are so many postmortem written all over the world based on the same data. And for every different company and team, we will get completely different postmortem. Um, but what if we'll be able, first of all, not to gather the information? Something else will gather the information for us, and that will be very impactful for the data gathering. And you will have everything in a single place. And from that point, you would get automatic analysis. Something will take the most, um, the most smart brain in the world, bring it together to one place, which is your data, and write the best postmortem that ever written for the same case. Maybe it's, maybe it's already pre-trained on similar postmortems and how they solve them. And that will be very impactful to how you are going to benefit from postmortems. And the last thing is when we have a postmortem, it doesn't hand uh, with writing the postmortem, right? So, so it's just a simple words on a text document. Uh, we need to follow up on the action items and, and deliver them. And then we actually go back to the start when we have action items. We go back to continuous preparation and so on and so on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we want, first of all, to implement the action items. That's really hard. And second of all, we need to follow up on them. How many, like, I guess that all of you, and you are free to raise your hand if you are not in this case, um, implemented all of your action items from postmortems. <laughs> Some people laughing. I, I, can, I can see uh, you, you understand what I mean. So it's really hard to follow up, and it really hard to make sure that we follow up on them and, and make close all the action items. So we want AI. We can just use them to, uh, to train us and, uh, and follow up on us. Um, so, Niv, what do you think? Like, will AI replace us? Um, well, that's a tough question because, yeah, maybe we'll be out of work soon. No, but seriously, something that we do have and AI doesn't have is uh, that we have uh, ownership. We need to take ownership and we need to be responsible for everything we make. So, even when all of us add all these things that we theoretically suggested to every step to make it a life easier, it's still. AI cannot take accountability. So as long as you are the owner and you take accountability on everything that happens in each step in wherever you work, I think, I think we're still needed. I think uh, we'll still have food without uh, deploying infrastructure as a code. Yeah. Um, that's it for today. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. And if you have any questions, feel free to jump and ask us in here. Thank you.